Good morning. My name is Ryan Wieland. I am currently a senior here at Veritas. I've been here since the archway opened in this building eight years ago. I was fourth grade. So for almost half of my life, I've been studying in these halls, learning how to read, how to write, but most importantly, how to think. Aristotle says that the characteristic activity of a human is an activity of the soul in accordance with reason. To think, therefore, is one of the highest and most important activities humans are capable of. Reasonable thought in itself raises us up and makes us nobler by its movement in our soul. Why do I say this? Because as I look back over my years here to my first year as a fourth grader, I remember a dimness of mind that slowly faded away through my studies. I am certain it is still thick over my head. And this says over the next half decade, I will disperse the rest. Um, I learned that that's wrong the first time I delivered this speech. Um, optimism. But I can remember what it felt like being completely without self-awareness. As I read and was urged to argue, form opinions on meaningful subjects, describe things around me, and begin to practice the art of reasoning, I began to notice something at the center of all of my studies. Forgive me for sounding narcissistic, but I found myself. There is no greater mystery, especially for a young boy, than to look out at the world in wonder and suddenly find that the most beautiful objects of his study are anchored to his own nature. I studied beauty, and that gave me the capacity to recognize beauty in myself, for we are by nature things of beauty. The death of a person is extraordinarily sad, and the birth of another is extraordinarily joyful. What I've been allowed to discover through all of my studies is the joy of life. Of course, I've learned smaller things along the way. I know a good deal of physics. I can describe mathematically fairly complicated physical scenarios. I can manipulate geometrical figures. I can describe mathematical identities such as complex polynomials, limits, derivatives, and integrals. I can read classical Latin. I can speak Attic Greek a little bit. I can create both beautiful art and music. I can enter into a dialogue with the greatest, most influential minds of human history, receive their ideas into myself, and hold my own in a meaningful discussion about them. But all of these individual skills, each of which is a dear, dear gift from the school to me, point to something greater. The ideals that we discuss are good in and of themselves, but they are only praiseworthy or honorable when they are present in someone. Virtue is itself great, but a virtuous person is an outstanding blessing to everyone who knows him. Here's an example. Love of a mother in the abstract is a fine and noble thing, but love of a mother in her child is far more beautiful. And it is one thing to say someone sacrificed everything for his friends and quite another to say, here is that man. The ideas we talk about so commonly are fulfilled by their presence in the soul of man. I do not claim to contain every noble virtue, but I have begun to see them creeping both into me and into my friends. And this is my point when I say that I have found myself. It is this very capacity to be able to turn in on myself and examine my own self that I find absolutely extraordinary. As a very little boy, I loved stories of valor, of chivalry, of faith, friendship, and fearlessness. I discovered that these are characteristic of men, of humans. And I count the day blessed when for the first time, after days of frolicking in literature, I came home to my soul and found it a foreign land for I myself am human. It sounds strange, but the idea had never concretely occurred to me. In any case, I feel that the realization of my humanity, knowing both my virtues and my vices, has prepared me for whatever adventures I may come across. I have spoken thus far about myself, but you have inspired this awareness. Through the goodness and love of my teachers, I have entered the search for truth, goodness, and beauty that is life. I cannot express my gratitude enough. And all of your students who are aware of the daily gift you give them will say the same. Yours is a thankless job indeed, for the students whose humanity you unlock through the awakening of their reason rarely remember what it was like to lack the faculty of rational thought. For most of us, the hour of thanks may long have grown distant by the time we finally understand how momentous a service you have done for us. My parents have given me the unfathomable gift of life, my parents have given me the unfathomable gift of life, 
You have cultivated in me the wonder befitting a man in this fairy land of a world we call home, and I shall bear both those unpayable debts to my grave. On behalf of all of my peers, therefore, for the beautiful and glorious work that you do, I thank you. Have a wonderful year.